Good morning, church. Glad to see you again for another Five for Faith morning devotional. Uh, today we're going to look into my second favorite topic besides talking about King Saul, and that's going to be judgment, talking about in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, many, many people have either dealt or read upon these parts of the Old Testament. Um, uh, it makes up a significant part of the prophesizing of the Old Testament that leads to the future. Um, along with the prophesizing of Jesus. And in the New Testament, we see it most prominently in Revelations. Um, I would define these books as probably like the action movie of the Bible. You know, they're really explosive, bombastic, and extremely brutal. Like, really, really violent. Um, and a lot of people find them extremely difficult to kind of understand because there's a lot of confusion, confusing imagery seen especially in Revelations and a lot of references to different parts of the Bible and unless you're working with like a commentary you can kind of get lost and you know get lost in the sauce. Uh, worse even is that um, a lot of times people can look at these books and feel like they're outside the character of God the Father you know this loving person like why would such a loving God destroy his own people. So um, today I'm going to kind of remedy some of these confusions and we'll look into a little bit of Old Testament prophecy uh, what that means for their judgment how can we what can we learn from that um, and why why it must be a thing, you know? So first things first, uh, where am I talking about uh, in terms of Old Testament judgment? Well, a uh, majority of the Old Testament prophets were, I would can say like, I would say like seemingly contracted just to carry out the one task of telling Israel that they've been really stepping over their bounds and messing up. Um, I'm talking particularly Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Joel, Amos, Micah, Nahum. Those are just like seven that are off the top of my head or that are my notes. Um, if you want a specific example, uh, I've been reading in uh, Ezekiel chapter 7, and uh, let's see, this verse is 2 and 3. Also thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end, an end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end a come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy, to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. Okay, now... Now, here we see that the anger of God has been brought against Israel. And now, this anger that we're talking about has been boiling for quite a few centuries. Uh, as I just stated, that there was a bunch of prophets that I just listed out. That means that God's been telling Israel that you've been really got to get back on this horse for quite a long time. You know, and obviously they haven't done so, or they don't have to talk about that. So, along with telling the people what's what, how they need to fix it, um, the prophets also talk about the prophecy of judgment. And most commonly, it is, it is uh, told in the prophecy of the thirds. Now, I won't, I won't have a lot of time to get really, really in-depth in with this, but uh, I can give you the summarized version. So, the prophecy of the thirds breaks down into one-third of Israel's people are going to be slaughtered by the sword, one-third is going to be uh, brought into captivity, and the last third is going to be scattered across the kingdoms um, in their own in, in their own way, and the vehicle for this judgment uh, comes through Babylon. They're the ones who God kind of uses to bring them in and uh, destroy them, and then put them into captivity. Um, and we see the product of this pulled about, talked about mainly around the end of Jeremiah. We see it talked about in Haggai, Zechariah, Daniel. Um, so now that we kind of know what that judgment is, which is Israel is going to be paying for what it's been doing to God for a long time, um, what can we brought, what can we bring out from this? Because you know, if you read through it, it's brutal. Like it's super brutal, especially in Nahum. It's extremely brutal throughout all of it. It's really dark. Um, it seems like a really really messed up day for Israel. They describe it as like one of the darkest days in their history. You know. Um, but I'm a firm believer that Israel is just another illusion for us. And by I mean us, I mean our rebellious nature as humans. You know, we go every day and mess up, and even though we know that God's in our lives, we still continue to sin. We still make mistakes, you know. Uh, Amos chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 talk about that. Oh, Israel is the example for the nations all around them. So we can find a lot of similar similarities in their actions and how they're rebellious and, uh, versus how we are rebellious. So, um, so first thing to, to gleam from this, from the idea of judgment, is that one, that God is powerful, that he just is all powerful, and we know that, you know, he created everything around us, so obviously him doing judgment is just kind of flexing that power, um, showing us that even when we think that we are in control, he is truly in control of everything, okay? But there's more, there's a more crucial reason for judgment uh, uh, and why it needs to happen, okay? And it's because God is a just God, and that kind of seems a little weird, because, you know, we like the idea of justice when it's when it's you know us against someone else. You know we don't want 
justice to be brought against us because you know that probably hurts a little bit that sounds really painful especially in terms of justice for israel um however we have to remember that uh jesus hadn't drank the cup of, of wrath yet you know he what he hadn't been on this earth so israel has been racking up this fat glass of wrath debt you know every time they fail to acknowledge god and every time they sin and he had made it god had made it very clear with just with the sheer amount of uh, prophets that he had sent um that they had been really messing up he had shown mercy over and over trying to send them more and more people to talk and help them out however uh it comes to a point <laughs> you know where he says okay this is the time this is the day and this is when judgment is uh, this time is going to be when judgment happens you need to be ready or this is going to happen okay um so they they hadn't generated that cultural shift they hadn't switched from their from their sinful ways you know we can relate um and throughout all that they had they had judgment come down to them so Israel ends up paying for their actions, and uh, how, so we'll, we'll kind of look at later into what this means for us, and how can we learn from their failures? Because again, they were the, the the practice dummy for us. We can learn from how they went through judgment and the reasonings why they went through judgment, um, and see how can we can kind of put that in our lives. Next time, we'll also be looking into how Jesus plays into the whole narrative of judgment, why he's important, and the question of what if you know why should I care if I'm already saved? You know. You know, I'm our, I don't have to deal with this judgment. Uh, again, this is all coming in the second part. Uh, I thank you for being with me here in this part of the devotional, and you have a good morning.